Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Rachel. I'm your host here on the Rachel Varga podcast. I have a very special guest joining us today. We have with us Rachel Pontillo and she is a sought after expert guest, writer, contributor, educator, and speaker in the areas of holistic and integrative skincare, nutritional aesthetics trademark, natural skincare ingredients, and product formulation, herbal skincare, self-care, self-image, and self-love. Rachel and I are absolutely on the same wavelength when it comes to really understanding that our skin is a reflection of our inner wellness. And when we're healthier on the inside, newsflash, our skin's going to be better. However, what we apply on the skin topically is very important. It's almost like putting a multivitamin on your skin, if you will. And we want our skincare products to be feeding and nourishing the skin. So the purpose of this episode is to talk about Gua Sha. And we are going to be uncovering some of the tips and tricks that you need to know how to do it properly and maybe answer some frequently asked questions that I get on my social media all the time. If I like it, if I recommend it, how does it work? Am I going to be able to lift my brows, get rid of my jowls? There are absolutely limitations with this option, but it can definitely help to support lymphatic drainage. So without further ado, welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about yourself and then let's just dive straight into what is the Gua Sha modality. Absolutely. So my background is in holistic and integrative skincare as well as functional nutrition, herbalism, health coaching. So I really look at the skin from the inside out and the outside in and how the skin is integrated with different systems and functions of the body as well as the mind and the spirit. So I really believe that the skin is, it's how we present ourselves to the world, right? It's how we express ourselves. It's the world's first impression of who we are. And it really does have a lot tied to how we feel about ourselves. So caring for the skin is definitely caring for the self. Mm -hmm. And as you said, what we put on product wise topically is absolutely important for feeding the different functions that the skin does provide, including, you know, immunity, um, body temperature re regulation, nervous function, all sorts of different things that we want to make sure that we're nourishing and allowing to happen the way it's meant to. Mm -hmm. So let's get straight into the meat of this conversation. Yes. What is the Gua Sha modality? What does it do? How does it work? We all want to know. Okay. So Gua Sha is something that is traditionally a modality within East Asian medicine. East Asian medicine is a term now used, it's kind of the more modern term for traditional Chinese medicine um, or oriental medicine. Those terms are still used by some practitioners, but because these methods don't all just come from China, they do come from other Asian countries in that region of Asia, the term East Asian medicine is more accurate. So mm -hmm. when we're talking about things like acupuncture, even like Reiki, um, acupressure and Gua Sha, facial cupping, things like that are all things that we would associate with traditional Chinese medicine, but really there are practices in other countries that, um, are similar that fall into this category of East Asian medicine. So Gua Sha typically is various shaped tools. Um, you can find them made of different stones. You can find them made of certain metals. Um, you can also find them made of clay. This is a celadon clay one, which celadon clay is a traditional clay used in pottery in some of the East Asian countries. And then um, traditionally you would use jade for the stone, but you can also find them in just about any gemstone lately because it has just become so much more popular. So rose quartz is typically the stone that's associated most with self-love. Um, I have a little mushroom shaped one here in the rose quartz as well, which we'll talk about the different uses for the different shapes of the tools. And then this one is banded fluorite. Um, it's a really translucent one. Typically you'll see that this will have different uh, versions of like turquoise color to purple. Sometimes it might be more purple. This one is a little bit more clear, 
but uh, fluorite is really excellent for helping you get rid of energy and stress that's not yours in the first place. It kind of acts like a vacuum to just pull that energy away from you. And really the purpose of the Gua Sha tool is to be incorporated in massage. So it's done traditionally on the body, but we're gonna talk about it in the context of the face. And also we can talk about it on the scalp and on the neck for aesthetic purposes. Um, but the stones, the different stones energetically in classical Chinese medicine, that kind of, uh, it's an older modality actually, there is a whole stone medicine component of that, which associates the different mineral composition and different energetics of the stones with certain issues, either physically, mentally, emotionally, or even spiritually. So there's a lot that we can incorporate into a gua sha practice beyond just moving things around over here. Um, I really take a conservative and gentle approach to gua sha on the face. On the body, it can be actually, um, I don't want to say aggressive because typically in East Asian medicine, you know, we, we move things around. There, there might be things like cupping where you see like the big purple marks that are left on people from yep. bringing stuff I to the surface. I have some cup marks on me right now, actually. Do you? I yeah. first experienced squasha actually from a motor vehicle accident. I was rear-ended oh. really badly and I was getting acupuncture and you know, my provider said, do you want to try gua sha? I was like, yeah, go for it. Yeah. And I loved it for releasing the fascia and, yes. you know, improving sort of the muscle fiber alignment and getting rid of that, like knottedness of some yes. of my muscles. Yeah. It's really good for things like nerve impingements. And um, in chiropractic, there's a modality that they use that's similar with a stone that looks exactly the same called Graston, which is more you know, it, it's more to break up the fascia and yeah. move things around. Um, but yeah, the gua sha on the body, it's a scraping motion. So they take a tool, like a bigger version of this for the body, and they literally scrape and really dig in there, deep tissue. It's not necessarily a comfortable feeling um, yeah. for many yeah. people. It can be a little like, mm, like triggery, um, but it really can be beneficial to help break up that tension and release stagnation. But for the face, even though you can do a technique that is more intended to lift and to firm and to restore glow and essentially help to release tight muscles, release stagnant lymph, and help to kind of get that fascia lifted and retrained almost, you can do it that way. But there is also a more gentle hand where you really just want to put light, light, light pressure on the surface, almost like what you would do with fingertips with the tool to help release heat, help release stagnation, and really get that lymph flowing. The lymphatic vessels, it's this whole network of little tiny vessels that are right underneath the uh, subcutis, which is the layer of uh, fat cells underneath the dermis. And they really are important for helping the body release toxins that are maybe stuck in toxins and brain stored yep. micronutrients yeah yes. i actually was in toronto a couple of months ago and i did this incredible cadaver lab with uh, dr kodafana he's a mayo clinic top um cadaverist expert and so we were pulling apart the layers of the face and the fascia and mm -hmm. it was just fascinating so, so i really feel like whatever we can do to support lymphatic drainage is great. So say you don't have extra funds right now to buy these beautiful stones that Rachel's holding up. If you're, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, switch over to YouTube, you'll be able to see some of the things that she's sh sharing with us are just gorgeous. But if you don't have the money to buy them, uh, you know, lymphatic drainage with your fingertips when you're putting yes. your, your, your beauty products on is great. But I love this because it's just helping us take time to be with ourselves and be with our bodies. And it's something that can be done on a regular basis at home. Yes, it can be really, you know, pleasurable to go get a gua sha facial. And I recommend that everybody try that, but it's something that I literally do every night while I'm watching TV to kind of unwind from my day. It's part Love of it. my daily regimen. I create um, a gua sha facial oil blend with really nutrient and antioxidant rich oils like rosehip oil, or I use jojoba oil. And um, 
it's just you put the oil onto the face first to just get mm -hmm. that lubrication in place and then as you're moving the stone around it helps to push those nutrients in and what a lot of people don't realize about oils is that plant oils are extremely nutrient dense and the nutrients from those oils are more likely to absorb because the skin has a lipid matrix and like attracts like so the skin um, receptors are going to see the nutrients in that lipid, many of which are very similar to human sebum, mm -hmm. and it will att it's attract it. It will pull them in. It'll be like, hey, I know you, come on in. And um, that's something that's really important to know because a lot of the products that are on the market are water are water based, and have water soluble nutrients, and they always are going to have a harder time getting past that lipid barrier. So anything that's oil soluble is going to absorb faster and be more bio bioavailable. And then when you're using the stone to help kind of push that in, you're going to have even better absorption. Yeah, I would love for you to show us yeah. how to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you just a couple of quick things here. What I really encourage is that people start right below the clavicles here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Above and below, there tend to be kind of, I like to say we just wanna unclog the drains yeah, before they're like we our thoracic start moving things around. Here. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can just start with kind of this rounded part of the tool and you can use fingers as well if you don't have a tool but start by just moving the tool with gentle pressure you don't want to dig too deep we're not trying to create any marks we're not trying to compress mm. the tissue we're just trying to wake up those kind of valves and those nodes and just be like hey we're gonna be taking out the trash right now you ready yeah. So underneath we open it up clavicle. so that everything from the head and neck can then get flushed out through the rest of the lymphatic system. Absolutely. So starting in the center, right under the clavicle, just gently pushing outwards, just follow that bone on both sides and then do it on the top. Kind of dig where that little divot is in that clavicle. You can start right in the middle here and then just go out very gently like this. And the analogy of a drain is really helpful because if you move a ton of stuff around up here, but the drain is clogged, mm -hmm. it's not going to, it's just going to reabsorb. It's not going to go out. We really want to get that lymph out of the face. The majority of the lymph nodes of the body are actually in the head and the it's neck. Like, yeah. 30% are like right here. It's really, really important um, to, yeah. So, but we want to make sure these kind of like master drains are clear so that that lymph, that stagnant lymph doesn't just get stagnant again just like you know if you have a pond of water and you skip stones on it and there's ripples and then it stops it becomes stagnant again we want to keep things moving mm -hmm. so after we unclog the drains here on around the clavicle what i recommend is starting at right under the jawline with the flat or slightly concave edge of the tool with a shallow angle. You don't wanna be going at a 90 degree angle because that can actually be a little bit too aggressive. Shallow angle, gently just, you can hold the skin at the jawline taut, but you wanna have a gentle downward motion just around the neck. I do not recommend going over the thyroid. You do see some videos where people are either going upward for quote unquote lifting or even downward with this um, indented area of the tool over the thyroid. I really don't recommend that, especially since so many people these days have thyroid issues. We don't want to overstimulate that area. The purpose here is to just pull down the lymph and help that release and not, we don't want to be, we're, we don't want to be interfering with anything. Yeah, else this is here. a very delicate organ. Very delicate. And this the skin on the neck is very thin as well. So again, we just want to gently pull it taut above the jaw or at the jaw and then just gently pull down. And you can go gently over back here, but you don't want to go too hard because that's something that, you know, there's a lot of arteries and blood vessels back here and we don't want to be interfering with those processes as well. So just gently downward motions on the neck to help, again, unclog those drains. And then the lifting part starts really along the jaw. This is where we can take either a tool shape like this, where we have this little divot in here that kind of hugs the jawline like this. We can start in the middle of the chin and then um, just gently pull 
up and back like this along the jawline on both sides. But when you get to the end, make sure you then switch to the flat side and pull it down. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to get all stuck in here. It's really good. These um, There's points here behind the jawline, like right where the uh, maxilla and the mandible meet. There's a, It's sensitive here if you were to push in. This is a common acupressure point, and there's a lot of nerve endings here. Just gently kind of massage that down. So right here where the jaw and uh, the, the lower jaw and the upper jaw meet, you just kind of want to make sure that when you're pulling back, it doesn't just get stuck here. Take it here and then switch and gently bring it down. And just do that a couple of times. You don't need to do it a lot. This is something that less is more, less pressure than you think. It's way more effective than you think because you're doing this on a regular basis. So small pressure and you don't have to be doing it for hours and hours. It's just something that the whole thing can take five to 10 minutes but do it on a regular basis. And that's how you start to see really consistent results. Same with, you know, anything, acupressure, cosmetic acupuncture, they're usually briefer treatments, but you do them more often and you get really nice results, very subtle over time, but impactful at the same time with that regular use. So then once you leave the jaw area, I like to really work around this jowl area and the mouth area. And one tool that I do like, and this tool is not always easy to find, um, this little round one. So if you can't find this little round one, you're going to find a lot of the regular flat gua sha tools that have this kind of... Um, it's like a jagged edge almost. Jagged edge. Yeah, I almost said serrated. It's not quite serrated because it's not sharp. But, you know, it's got these little, these little uh, bumpies on them. So what you can do is just around this area very gently again with a shallow angle not you'll, perpendicular. You'll probably cause some bruising guys <laughs> exactly we don't want to do that like no. you're trying to restore glow not uh not make yourself purple and you also too much pressure can cause broken capillaries which mm -hmm. we don't want because those can actually be permanent and um that's not what we're going for here so what you can do is hold the skin either with one hand like kind of over your head, pull it up this way. And then where that area where that jowl kind of starts to sag, you can kind of just, almost like you're using an eraser, go over this area here and then up here into the nasal labial fold and just kind of go like this, just to loosen it up really gently. And it feels really nice. The stone is cool. And then after you do that, you can then take the flat side and gently just lift and then move it down. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Rachel is going from like the middle of her face to like the sides of her face from like her nose, her chin, all the way back to her ears is we're pushing that lymph, that stagnant lymph fluid to the sides of the face. And then we're sort of shuttling it down the neck yes. to then get filtered through the, the rest of the, the body's lymphatic system. Absolutely. Then actually goes to like our, our liver and our kidneys. So things can get detox. And then essentially you are just excreting the stagnant toxins when you're going to the, to the washroom. Absolutely. So another area I like to focus on is the cheekbone. Similar to what we did with the jaw, you kind of want to feel where that bone is. And there's another kind of drain up here, um, not quite in the temple, but here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's, I forget, it, it's one of the trigeminal nerves. I forget which one it is. But you want to kind of go under the bone with, again, this little divot area. You don't have to kind of fit the whole cheekbone in it because some of the tools are more shallow. Some of them do fit, but you can just take the rounded area and just gently, and again, pull it here, or you can pull it here. Just, you want to have your skin taut because you're not trying to drag the skin. You're trying to have the tool glide on the skin so that the movement is really focusing on that lymph underneath. We're not pulling at the skin here. We're not trying to affect the skin's elasticity or anything like that because we can actually do damage that way yeah. to those fibers. So we want to just gently under where that cheekbone kind of starts right here, maybe half an inch away from the corner of the nose. Again, just pulling up really gently and then kind of wiggle it in that 
little nerve area, that little point there, and then guide it down and pull it down. And then you can do kind of the same thing on top of the cheekbone and under the eye. And then that you can pull up to the temple area and again, wiggle it. And you don't have to pull down after every single movement, just, you know, after you finish an area, that's when it's a good idea to do that little wiggle and then gently pull it down. Can and I then for the really funny, Rachel. Oh yeah, sure. So this is actually a really similar technique to what's used with certain dermal infusion treatments in a med mm, Very so interesting. Pulling things from the middle, the sides of the face, and then down. You know, I've been doing these with a lot of my in-clinic facial treatments actually for years Great. without knowing that it was actually similar to, to the gua sha modality, which is hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's really interesting because, you know, East Asian medicine dates back thousands of years. These practices- well, This is where they got this from. Exactly. Yeah. And even Ayurveda, which has, instead of the chi points or the tsubo points, they call them marma points or marmani is the plural of that. The locations are very similar. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we have the, tra the European translation with kind of the European facial massage. So we really do see these are universal teachings about the body that just have come up over different cultures that either have been influenced by each other or not. Sometimes the knowledge just pops up and then you learn it somewhere else. And it's like, huh, those cultures really didn't have anything to do with each other for thousands of years yet. They know the same information. So it's really interesting kind of on the woo woo side of things, how um, we're taught about our bodies and what our bodies need. So once we leave this upper cheekbone area, I like to really focus around the eyes. And this is something that can be done with the fingers or if you have a smooth tool, you don't want the um, serrated or the notched edge. You want a really smooth tool. You can go right in the under eye area and pull it up to that temple area. This is really great in the morning if you have puffiness. Again, and just to really differentiate, gentle. people can have different reasons for puffiness around their Absolutely. eyes. Absolutely. They can either have like fluid accumulation or they can have excess fat or right. their skin laxity from the last of last in collagen or the ubiquitous oculine muscle can become very bulky. So if, say for an example, you have edema, right? You wake up and just get this extra little like pocket of fluid here. Or if you've eaten a really salty meal or have had MSG, this will sure. be actually really helpful for that lymphatic drainage. So if you have that like malar edema and you wake up and you're like a little bit more puffy or you sleep on one side and you end up with it more on one side than the other, then this could be a really helpful lymphatic drainage. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, and definitely. So this is just for general puffiness under the eye. This is, I, I will echo what you said that there's a lot of reasons for puffiness and also dark circles. There's a lot of reasons for that often kidney related, fluid related, the wrong kinds of fats in the diet, you know, whatever happens to be going on. If you're someone with chronic puffiness and just gentle technique, like gentle techniques like this don't make a difference, that means there's probably something going on that's different. Um, so in addition to the under eye, you actually want to focus on the area right under the brow bone as well, but very gently. Um, so you can take this curved part here and just trace the area of that ocular cavity here. And you're actually going in alignment with the muscle fibers as well. Yes. And the, um, actually the lower eyelid is how the, the eye actually gets its lymph drainage done. Mm -hmm. So say for example, you've had tear trough filler or fillers really too close to the eyes and you're getting puffiness from that. Um, you know, maybe you should look at maybe having that, that dissolved because when we do like tear trough filler for dark circles, hollowing, it actually impairs that lymphatic drainage. This is why I wrote a paper on uh, periocular rejuvenation last year because there's just so many problems I see with it. So this is a really great way to get that lymphatic drainage happening. Excellent. So I want to just talk about two other things that are really common, and that's those 11s lines between, those are those vertical 
lines that we get between the brows, that is typically associated with liver function. So you might notice them if you were out partying and maybe a little bit too much wine, you might wake up with some deeper 11s creases between the brows than normal. Whereas if you are not drinking alcohol, you might not see them. Um, One of the things that um, is actually the most common reason why people come to see me is for those lines. Mm. And we have a couple of muscle groups also at play. So it's like all these little factors to contribute to these lines. So we have our procerus muscle, which runs vertically and brings the brows down. And then we have our corrugator supercilia muscles, which is sort of right at the, the heads of our eyebrows, if you will. And when we contract, we're using those muscles and we're creating those lines. And over time, those muscles when they're constantly firing will cause creases to form in the skin. So there's always a few things happening. So there's definitely the muscles are, are going on as well. If you have really deep lines, I just want to be really clear with you guys, something like a gua sha, if you've had those lines for like five or 10 years already, obviously it's not going to go away overnight, but everything that we can do to help is going to be a good thing. It takes time. You know, it's um, there's, all sorts of different ways to do things and that you and I have talked about that there's different approaches that you know different ways to achieve different goals but it's certainly something that you can add to your daily practice totally. I will say if you have had injections you do not want to be going over those areas with the gua sha tool you can um, actually interfere with the results that you were trying to get in that way so you would want to avoid those areas or definitely talk to your practitioner um, so yeah, so for the 11s, there's two things that I like to do. Again, it's just the rounded edge that I use. I don't like to use the serrated edge in this area. I start first in the middle. I pull up in the hairline right in the middle and I just do lifting from the bridge of the nose up, just lifting very, very gently. And for this, I do use a little bit sharper of an angle than I normally would. Um, not sharper, I guess, more perpendicular. Yeah, and, and you're then, going right along the fibers of where that procerus is and then yeah. where it innervates with the frontalis muscle as well. Yep. And then what I do after I do that just vertical lifting motion there is I take my two fingers, my thumb and my index finger, I put it at the top of my hairline and I lift. And then, so I basically separating this way, but also pulling up. So lift, and then again, take this angle here, and then I kind of go in a gentle zigzag, just kind of like, again, I'm erasing the lines. I'm, this is like my magic eraser, and I'm just doing it this way. And then- yeah, And that's right over the direction of the corrugator muscles too. Yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> see? So then after that, what I like to do is I take the flat or the slightly concave edge, depending on the shape of your tool. Then I, again, pull up at the top of the hairline and then I start right in the center like this. And then I gently am lifting straight up from the bridge of the nose to the top. And then I'm going in kind of a radial pattern following from that center bridge between the brow area to the various um, points along the hairline here. And then again, out to the temple here. And then at the temple, I'm doing that wiggle thing. And then we can move it down. And then I do that on the other side. So we're, we wanna be symmetrical here. And you'll see, if you're looking up like hashtag gua sha on Instagram, there's a lot of people who are show like before and after where they'll do half their face and they won't do the other half. And you can visibly see a difference in the tone and the firmness of the skin on the side that was done. So it really can be effective. And just an so, FYI, we typically have, this is like a cheat that people do with before and after photos, a little behind the scenes. The left side of the face typically has more damage because it's our driving side. So you just have to be careful when you're looking at before and after photos because typically the left side looks worse than the right side just in general because of the sun damage. So just take that into account as well. Become more. That's a really good tip. Yeah. That's true. Very true. So that's the face part. And then after I do the face, I really do like to just go back over that jawline area again, gently, just to release anything that might have kind of fallen and I do it on both sides. And then again, this nerve area back here where those two jaws connect to that point. And then just again, release it down the neck 
all around, and then you can unclog the clavicle drains again, or the, the thoracic lymph lymphatic uh, nodes again. Um, so that's for the face. And then I also just do want to quickly say that the scalp also, there's a lot of lymph, lymph nodes in the scalp, as well as muscles that control our facial expressions. So the tool that has the notches, I love on the scalp. So mm -hmm. I would recommend just from your hairline, just back again in that kind of radial pattern, starting in the center, I'm gonna use this tool, the flat one with the notched edge, because you're gonna, if you're shopping for these tools, you're gonna to find this much more easily than the round tool. The round tool I got from a practitioner who sells, who I don't think she sells them anymore. So this, uh, this is my little fluorite one. So again, I'm just starting and you know, you might wanna make sure your hair doesn't get in the way. So if you have like a side part, you wanna maybe pull it back for this, but you wanna just start at this hairline in the center, and then just go back and then just go on either side with that notched edge and do both sides. And then in the back here, right under like where the, um, I don't know the like names the of the muscles of the skull, as easily as you do, those, o that, those ocular areas, the- uh, Occipital condyle. Yes. Thank you. I knew the word, <laughs> it was just like the. New sounded like ocular, but yes, occipital, where the occipital lobes would be occip uh, occipitalis. Is that it? I don't know. I know the names. I just haven't looked at the books in a while, Rachel. <laughs> but where those areas are back here, you just want to kind of take the stone and just do like a circular massage in those areas really gently. I'm so and doing this next time I do my hair. feels so good. <laughs> and then the areas behind the ears also, these are just really good to go over gently with that notched edge because we do get a lot of accumulation behind the ears yeah. as well. And our muscles actually attach to our skull there yes. also. So if you're having like headaches and stuff like that, it's probably going to feel really nice. Yes, this is so great for so many things. And you know how we talk about how the internal organs affect the skin. Well, in East Asian medicine, through things like acupressure and gua sha and facial cupping, cupping and stuff like that, because the different points on the face and the scalp and the neck and really the whole body, but we're just speaking of, you know, from the neck up here, these points do correspond with the different points along the meridians associated mm -hmm. with different organs. Mm -hmm. So really we are, we can affect the internal health by these treatments as well. So it really is a full body, mind body treatment and um, it's great for headaches. It's very relaxing. So it's great for the emotions as well. So I recommend it as a daily practice, but again, my feedback, uh, uh, my recommendation really is just be really gentle with yourself. Um, use caution again if you have had injections or if you've had plastic surgery you want to make sure you talk to your doctor or your practitioner about that just to see if they even recommend it at all they might recommend a modified version um, so just be mindful of that but if you haven't had any of those procedures done then what I just described is something that you can do safely and gently on a daily basis and then just, you know, get creative with the different stones that you choose, see what speaks to you. Sp stones speak to people similar to how plants do mm -hmm. through the intuition. Mm -hmm. So if there's something that you're feeling called towards, I say, give it a try. And then just note how you feel afterwards. Um, one further tip that you have to know absolutely when you're doing any type of facial massage or body massage is make sure you're drinking extra water mm -hmm. because the water is going to help to flush those toxins out. This is just fantastic, Rachel. And it's funny, as you were doing the demonstration, I was like, okay, yeah, I understand this mechanism of action. We're learning more and more about the fascia all over our body. Mm -hmm. And there's like these little paper thin, like layers of tissue, right? And so if yeah. we're supporting, you know, making sure that that fascia is nice and smooth and healthy mm -hmm. and mobile, any massage therapist is going to tell you that yogis yes. have really just like smooth muscles and fascia because they're stretching, they're moving things around, which is really, really good for you. So I personally love it on my body. This is also can be helpful for things like cellulite on your outer thighs to reduce that 
that tension of the fascia, which will then kind of like buckle the adipose tissue and you'll get the dimpling on the back of your thighs and on, on your glutes. You know, even doing these types of self massage on your abdomen, there's so many points of for lymphatic drainage on your lower abdomen. I love this. So say you don't have the funds to invest in a gua sha tool, just go ahead when you're using your cleanser, your serum, your moisturizer, just take that time when you're putting things on to work from sort of like the middle of your face out to the sides and then pulling everything down. I just think it's awesome. If you're wondering, okay, how can I integrate doing my scalp? Do it while you have your hair mask on. I love it. Even as you were doing the demonstrations, when I do my dermal rolling, I actually, without even really realizing it, I was doing the motions, uh, like doing my face first and then ending my dermal rolling on my neck and my chest, which then again is another way to facilitate that drainage downward. That's great. And just another note about the tool itself. So you will see some that are very high priced. It's not necessary. Yes. You can okay. find them really inexpensive, like $20, $30 online. It's, you do not have to invest a lot into this. Um, and also if, if just not purchasing a tool is for you at all, other than using your fingers, what I recommend, and I actually told my mother to go do this because she lives on a lake. Said, so go down to the lake, get a skipping stone totally. that has, you know, you just want a flat stone that is smooth. So if you have like a polished palm stone, or if you have a really smooth river rock or skipping stone, that is perfectly fine. You just don't want anything jagged or um, porous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I even have some just like chakra balancing stones yeah. that sometimes I'll work with and, you know, those are smooth too. So don't buy into like the gimmicks that are out there that are really expensive and quote unquote, just, you know, Instagram worthy kind of thing. I know. So this was such a fantastic conversation to really help people understand the science behind this modality. Uh, one thing just to note, if you have dermal fillers, you don't really want to be applying a lot of pressure where you've had fillers placed. Uh, as well as um, just in general with your own natural bone and fat and soft tissue. So just going really gentle will prevent that uh, uh, over time, you know, too quickly reabsorption of, you know, premature reabsorption of your filler, fat, soft tissue, bone. So gentle is definitely key because the fascia literally underneath the skin is so paper thin. All you need to be doing to open up those lymph nodes is just like press, press on them and then release and they're going to be doing their thing. So it's not about being aggressive. So you gave us just some fantastic, fantastic points and direction. Good. I'm so glad. It was fun. Yeah, this was great. So I'm going to be linking up all of Rachel's notes in the show notes below, including some of the uh, different things that she mentioned. So be sure to check out the description box if you are listening on the podcast or you're watching on the Rachel Varga YouTube channel. Rachel, it was just such a pleasure having you on. And this is just another great at home layering that you guys can all do to assist with your at home self-care routine. I'm finding more and more that all of these different lifestyle layers that we could do are going to be helpful, right? So Absolutely. I'm here Absolutely. to help you guys avoid the things that you shouldn't do and then some just really nice things that you can do at home. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And where can people find you, Rachel? So I have my website, rachelpontillo.com. I have a blog with a lot of really wonderful informational, holistic, and integrative skincare articles. There's some um, skincare recipes, as well as some good food and smoothie recipes that you can find there. And then also um, my Instagram at Rachel Pontillo. I do a lot with some fun stories and more informational posts. I do a lot with herbs that are beneficial for the skin and stuff like that. I'm really all about helping you make choices in your daily life that will help you in the long run and sometimes not even the long run, sometimes the short run, achieve your skin and wellness goals naturally. Yeah, just absolutely fantastic. And yes, Rachel is uh, now a regular on the podcast here. We had the, the chance of connecting a while ago and you know we're kind of like two peas in a pod, women on a mission just to help other women make smarter decisions for their skin rejuvenation path. So thank you so much for joining us, Rachel. It was an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much. The pleasure was mine.